when the goods or services are obtained by the organization then only we are going to recognize the entire transaction unless and until the share based payment is not going to be recognized only when you are getting that equity back in hand and at that point only when it gets recognized allocation of shares itself many a time you might have paid the value but the value is not been recognized or sometimes what is happening is that it has been a partial recognition sometimes it has been on a rejection basis good morning and welcome to the session 4 of unit 3 in ifrs and in this session we are going to talk about the share based payment and this is a very very important topic in ifrs as we are going to learn about what is the importance of share based on the reporting standards moving forward the objective of this standard is to specify the financial reporting by an entity that is by an organization when it takes a share based payment transaction so when you are going to take a share based payment transaction for the organization this becomes a very very important factor as they have to go forward and report this in particular it requires an entity to reflect its profit or loss this is mandatory because they have to reflect the profit or loss condition and the financial position with fx to the payment based transaction including expenses that are associated with the share options that are being granted to the employees most of the leading organizations in the world have always given something called as the employee stock options so moment when you talk about the share based payments that means there is a cost that is associated in terms of payments that are being done to the employees because they would go ahead and redeem the shares they would go ahead and sell the shares so there is some financial cost there is some financial transactions that are involved in terms of doing this business so it becomes mandatory for all of us to understand this objective now moving forward the definitions that are involved a share based payment transaction may be settled by another group on behalf of the entity requiring or receiving or acquiring goods or services now this is very very important why because in the paragraph 2 this also applies to an entity that receives goods or services when another entity in the same group of the shareholder has the obligation to settle the share based payment transaction and has the obligation to settle the transaction whenever another entity of the same group receives the goods or services until the transaction purpose is other than for payment now what happens here is that in case when we are going to talk about the share based payments it is obvious for the organization that they have to go forward and they have to talk about the entity in that same group they have to talk about the obligations that are related here and they have to settle the share based transaction and factors so that the same group receives the effect of that now unless and until if your company is not going to go in the share based methodology it's going to be other than the payment of goods or services then we are going to not include this we might have a different standard of reporting altogether followed by a recognition now let's come back to that recognition slide why because an entity shall require the goods or service that is they will recognize only if it is acquired in a share based payment when it obtains the goods or the services as are received which means to say that in the case when the goods or services are obtained by the organization then only we are going to recognize the entire transaction unless and until the share based payment is not going to be recognized the entity shall recognize a corresponding increase in equity that is in the share if the goods or services were received in an equity settled share based payment transaction or liability if the goods or services were acquired in a 
cash based settlement altogether so whenever we are going to talk about a payback or whenever we are going to talk about companies purchasing it back there is going to be a movement in the equity now for example wipro said that they are going to do a buyback in terms of the shares from the company and the buyback was worth about 16000 crores that was published in the newspapers now at that point of time when we are talking about the goods or services that are going to be cash based so there is going to be a downward trend in the equity and when it's going to be equity based when they're going to pay back in terms of equity there is going to be an increase altogether so now what happens is that when the goods and services received or acquired in a share based payment transaction do not qualify the recognition of asset they shall be recognized as expenses so if they are not going to be recognized as asset they shall be recognized as expenses altogether so suppose if they are not qualifying at that juncture at that position they are not being qualified as assets so automatically they will be recognized as expenses altogether now moving forward the equity settled share based payment transaction now why this is important for an equity settled share based payment transaction the entity shall be measuring the goods or services received and the corresponding increase in equity directly at a fair value now that is very very important why because the goods or services received unless that particular value that particular factor is coming into picture has to be estimated reliably so this is where i am going to bring it into picture where i am going to say that if in case for example now we are going to talk about two or three different factors here now the entity will actually try to understand what is very very important that is increase see for example the share based payment transactions what we are talking about it shall measure the goods received only when there is an increase in the equity value that is indirect at the fair end factor the goods or services received unless then that fair value cannot be estimated reliably only when you are getting that equity back in hand and at that point only when it gets recognized we are going to talk about the fair value we are only going to talk about the recognition why because that is the point that is the junction where you will be able to go forward and tell me that this is where we have received this is where we have estimated the reality now in case suppose you were not able to estimate in case you find it that we have not received the equity factors at all then what is going to happen there we will not be able to go forward and complete the share based payment at all so that's why i say if the entity cannot estimate receivably the fair value of the goods or services that they are going to be received the entity shall measure their value based on the corresponding increase of the equity indirectly by reference to the fair value of the equity instruments granted so suppose in case let's say that now let's say there are companies who are launching up their ipos now in that case what is going to happen here is that they are not being able to receive the fair value they are just going to go by the measurement of the corresponding value of the equity on that day and then they are going to look into the value that has been granted that is the fair value of the equities that have been granted there so now what we are trying to understand here is that the recognition factor becomes very very important so moment a employee or a company tries to go forward sell the share and there is going to be an equity based transaction that is going to happen there is going to be a, a recognition that is going to come into the factor altogether then only i am going to recognize it i am going to understand this altogether if that is not happened if that is not granted if that is not taken into position by me then this is going to be a deep problem for us so that is where we say that this has to be recognized this has to be understood very very clearly if it is not been understood if it is not been taken care then we will not be able to get a clear picture about what is going to happen so that's why i always say that it is mandatory for each one of us to understand what has been granted how I mean how the value has been equated altogether moving forward
transactions in which services are received. Now, there are certain times when you will be able to see that the transaction in which services are received and it is not just about the cash factor. So, the equity instruments granted vest immediately. Now, we are going to talk about vest which means to say that it has been transacted immediately. The counterparty is not required to complete a specified period of service before becoming unconditionally entitled to those equity instruments. So, if it has been done immediately, the vesting has been done immediately, the counterparty, the person on the opposite side is not required to complete the specified transaction immediately or by becoming unconditionally owing to that equity. So, he doesn't have to take that requirement on an immediate basis. In the absence of evidence to the contrary, the entity shall presume that the services rendered by the counterparty as consideration of equity instruments being received. So, moment the shares have been allocated to your name and you are happy with the allocation, automatically the organization shall start believing that you have received it, you have accepted, you have acknowledged the number of shares that have been allocated in your name. Now, this is quite evident why because whenever we are talking about the share price and share value factors in the day-to-day -day market conditions, the most important thing that starts jumping, that starts coming around with us is the allocation of shares itself. Many a time you might have paid the value but the value is not being recognized or sometimes what is happening is that it has been a partial recognition, sometimes it has been on a rejection basis. Now for the company, they will be able to acknowledge the same only when you have accepted the factor that the equity is transferred and the corresponding instruments have been exchanged altogether. Now, for the counterparty, that doesn't require at all. You don't have to go back and again sign any document or accept any approval. But for the company, it shows that yes, the entity is now saying that the party has accepted and that itself is considered to be a recognition for themselves. In this case, on the grant date, entity shall recognize that the services received in full with corresponding increase in equity, which means, yes, so many number of people have subscribed to my share and so many shares have been allocated. So on a particular date, the organization says that so many people have, an X number of people have already accepted my shares. They have bought in my share. So these are all my investors who are available in the market. The number of shares has been already allocated to so many people in the market. Now, if the equity instruments granted do not vest in the counterparty, suppose it has not been allocated, has not been taken care altogether, completed in a specific period of time. So, automatically it has not been completed. Then what happens? Services to be rendered by the counterparty as for the consideration of those equity instruments will be received in future vesting period. If not today, probably in six months or seven months, whenever the future period of allocation comes into picture, then we will take it into consideration. As of right now, I am not going to take it for granted. Now, the entity shall account for those services as well as they have rendered the counterparty during the vesting period within the corresponding increase in equity. So, whatever has been recognized in that time period in that flow, in that manner altogether. That is what we are going to consider as the growth factor, as the entire growth standard altogether. Other than that recognition, we are not going to consider anything else further. So that is why we say that this is a very, very important consideration altogether. Moving forward. Now, when we talk about the transactions measured, by a reference to the fair value of the equity instruments granted. Now, for example, the transactions measured by reference to the fair value of equity instruments will be measuring the fair value granted at the measurement date on the date of allocation. Whatever is the market value, that is what we are going to take. So, taking into account the terms and conditions as listed by the exchange. If the market prices are not available, the company will take an estimated fair value. Now, for example, let's say that the share price is going to be estimated somewhere between 
315 to 360 altogether. So I'm going to take a fair value stand of let's say 355 an average value here and I'm going to go with that. But then if the company is already listed at 360 rupees on the stock exchange then I'm going to take that and I'm going to go forward in terms of my valuation. The valuation technique is consistent and it's generally adopted as the valuation methodologies for pricing financial instruments and shall incorporate all factors an assumption that they are knowledgeable willing in terms of market participants and would consider in setting the price requirement this is mandatory altogether so at any given point of time this cannot be taken for any kind of right this has to be completed this has to be granted at any given point of time so this is very very important altogether moving forward treatment of the vesting conditions a grant of equity instruments might be conditional upon the factor upon the vesting conditions for example a grant of shares or share options an employee is typically conditional on the employee factor that is in terms of the specified period of time and there might be a performance condition that has to be satisfied such as the entity achieving specific conditions now so he has to undergo that specific condition specific factors all together and he has to take into account what are all the fair and estimated values now there might be conditions when i say the vesting conditions that means it is taken into account by adjusting the number of equity instruments altogether so at that point of time what is the transaction amount how much is the transaction what is the value under which conditions we are doing it is there a fair value available is that the amount is included whatever might be the terms and conditions spoken on that day in the market shall come into picture and after finding out the true value the vesting condition is taken into picture now in the case of non-vesting condition the entity shall take into account all non-vesting conditions when estimating the fair value because at that point of time I'm not getting a fair value I'm not getting a true value so I'm going to take this fair value instrument therefore for the grants that are going to come into picture with the non-vesting conditions into account I will recognize the goods or services received from the counterparty which satisfies all the vesting and not market which is just acknowledgement now we don't have the market condition in place here who remains in service for the specific period of time irrespective those non-vesting conditions are satisfied so now i don't have the real market value with me in the position so what i do is that from the counterparty i will only adjust into the fair amount value i will consider that at that specific period of time and i will believe that once that is being accepted that has been taken the grants or the equity instruments on the non-vesting conditions are accepted based on the fair value i will conclude on to my investment conditions on to my accounting standards altogether with this, I come to the end of this particular session. I hope and believe that the session was highly informative, useful and of a great resource to you. In the upcoming sessions, we will be speaking more about the Indian accounting standards with respect to the international financial reporting standards. Until then, stay tuned, stay blessed and stay enlightened forever. Thank you once again for joining me today on this wonderful session.